Hi, everyone, and welcome to Dr. Z PhD podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Z, <laughs> a clinical psychologist who is specializing exclusively in working with transgender and non-binary adults. And I have been doing this for the past, going on 18 years, believe it or not. And if it's your first time here, welcome. And a lot of you may already be very familiar with me from my extensive Dr. Z PhD YouTube channel. I say extensive <laughs> because by this point, I think I covered anything and everything there is to know about gender dysphoria in adults. And if you're not familiar with the channel, I highly recommend it because I think the information on there is very depthful. Hopefully everybody's doing well today, whatever you are. I am shooting this around 5 p.m. on a Sunday afternoon in LA. It is semi-day off. I, I see clients on weekends. Tomorrow, Monday, is always my day off, and I'm looking forward to... <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm looking forward to recording some more podcast episodes. This is what happens when you love, absolutely love what you do for a living. It becomes a passion. It becomes a heartfelt offering. It becomes something that really energetically drives you forward. Today, I want to talk about anxiety. Many of you always ask me to talk about anxiety, gender anxiety, gender OCD. And if you're not familiar with the acronym, that is obsessive compulsive disorder. Now, anxiety specifically dissective tenets of anxiety is not really my forte because my specialty is gender dysphoria. Having said that, of course, a lot of people that I see inevitably also struggle with anxiety. So the topic for today that I would like to discuss in the scope of anxiety is how your mind and anxiety end up stacking up and forming patterns that are not there. Because the mind is a powerful machine and it can definitely, definitely create patterns that start putting together a picture that is just not true. Especially when that happens while you're feeling anxious. And this is going to be very relevant to all of you who are listening, who are questioning your gender identity. And it's going to be very relevant to all of you who are not questioning, but trying to decide whether gender transition is something for you. Or maybe your post-transition, whatever that is for you. And you want to make some other decisions in your life but anxiety is getting in the way. So while I'm not an anxiety specialist, I want to share with you three most common anxious minds that I tend to get in my practice. And a little bit of disclaimer here, this is in no way a diagnostic way to Give yourself diagnosis. This is not about pathologizing. Because the truth is, every single person experiences 
some form of anxiety. Every single person. <laughs> I can even call life one ginormous anxiety because everything about life is anxiety provoking. Everything. Me making this podcast and not knowing what attention it's going to receive is anxiety provoking. Maybe you're listening to this and you don't even know where I'm going to take you in this discussion. Is anxiety provoking? So everything in life is anxiety provoking. But I usually see three most common patterns, and I bet a lot of you are going to be able to see yourself in one of these patterns. And then I will explain to you how, depending on a pattern that you find yourself in, you might then start piecing together a puzzle picture that may or may not be there, and what you can do about it. The first most common type of anxious mind that I see is just a worry worm. <laughs> I am a worry worm. Worry worms are minds that just tend to worry about things a little bit. Nothing too major. But things happen and you freak out a little bit. Not for too long. I would say almost every person experienced just this general worry feeling. If not several times throughout the day. And you may have had realization you have gender dysphoria and felt this pang of a little bit of worry nothing major and then you told yourself okay I'm going to figure this out or you may have made an appointment for hormones and felt a little angst of worry about how it's going to go Again, nothing major. So this is the first type of anxious mind that I see in my practice. Just a little dose of healthy anxiety, if you will. The second type is catastrophizing mind. This is the type of mind that tends to freak out and catastrophize, meaning you start seeing the future in drastic, fearful, scary scenarios. I often tell my clients, you are spinning out a blockbuster hit right now. This movie has not happened yet, but your brain is spinning out this black posture hit for no reason whatsoever. I often see people who realize they're transgender and they're in a relationship and they have to come out to their partners and they will start catastrophizing and spin out a narrative of how they're going to end up being alone, how everybody is going to leave them. Does that sound common? <laughs> Some of you are probably nodding your head right now. Or maybe you started hormones and you started to experience just a slight budding of your nipples on feminizing hormones. And you're freaking out. You're going to wake up with ginormous breasts and everybody's going to know and you're not out yet. <laughs> this is a catastrophizing mind. 
I don't know about you, but I'm definitely not a catastrophizing personality. And if you are, that's okay. We're all built differently. The third most common pattern that I see is the types that I also have to some extent. And that's a ruminating type. Ruminating anxiety mind, anxious mind, is a mind where where's a worrying mind will worry for a short period of time. Catastrophizing mind will spin out this ginormous blockbusters. <laughs> the ruminating mind is going to go into a loop on repeat of trying to solve a problem that anxiety presents. And as it comes to one solution, it's going to find another problem in that solution, and then another, and then another. And so the circular loop never ends. Ruminating minds can't sleep at night. They can't even sit because their body will literally be jittering because so much energy is going into their mental headspace to try to solve ongoing set of problems their ruminating mind will create for themselves. Does that sound like you? <laughs> and sometimes they will ruminate on one problem over and over and over and over in an attempt to come at a solution. A person may ruminate and lose sleep over trying to figure out, is this really gender dysphoria? Am I really trans? And the way that they will do that is they will ruminate and then go on a quest off on the internet, Reddit, YouTube, <laughs> maybe my podcast to start to search for answers. And the more information you feed to your mind, the more you will ruminate. So this is a ruminating type. And like I said, I sometimes experience that. Sometimes I will lose sleep over a problem that gives me a lot of anxiety and I will ruminate. And... It is painful. I feel for all of you who are ruminating types. It is so exhausting. And it takes so much energy out of you. Now, this is the three most common anxiety minds that I see in my practice. And of course, there's other patterns out there, but these are my most common ones. And the thing is, when information comes into your mind, the worrying type is less likely to create lasting patterns inside their headspace. Because worrying type tend to spend less of their time in that worrying state they're very quick to move forward, to make a decision, to make adjustment, to shift from worry position. So if you're worrying type and you're not prone to catastrophizing or ruminating, congratulations. Everybody who is listening who is either catastrophizing or ruminating, feel free to roll your eyes right now. <laughs> I am rolling my eyes. It's it's akin to going to dermatologist and being told you have normal skin type. <laughs> That's everybody that has oily or acne or dry skin roll our eyes. <laughs> but the catastrophizing and ruminating minds are not so lucky. Because when information comes in, the catastrophizing mind is going to start forming a pattern about the future 
there is going to be filled and saturated by your fears. And the pattern is going to be formed in a juxtaposition of a picture that is going to tell a story of, if I do this, then this horrible tragedy is going to befall me. And is that a very catastrophic picture to form? When your mind starts forming those type of patterns based on that anxiety, you're less likely to move forward because you perceive that that which you're moving forward to as terrifying. What you need to realize if you're catastrophizing type is that that which you're moving forward doesn't exist. It's a mirage. It's a blockbuster you spun out of your head. And truth is, it's not even a popular film and won't do so well in box office. For ruminating type, on the other hand, anxiety starts taking up and forming a different type of pattern. For ruminating types, it's not going to be so much of what's going to happen is going to be so terrifying. But is that you feel so out of control and so without a solution that everything is perceived as a problem. And you get into this loop of trying to search for the solution, which, by the way, doesn't exist. And it's a mirage in your case that you're creating for yourself of selling yourself an idea that the perfect solution is there when it doesn't exist. And that also prevents you from moving forward, just like catastrophizing time. So it's really, really important for all of you who are listening to start paying attention to what type of anxiety you tend to experience majority of the time. And you may already know this. A lot of people are very good at knowing their anxiety. I have so many clients who come and tell me I am a ruminating type or I tend to catastrophize. Some people are just worry types and they confuse their worry for rumination or catastrophizing, and it's not. Why is it so important to pay attention to what mind your anxiety tends to manifest in? Because then you can start to understand that the future you tell yourself is a future purely fictionalized by your anxious mind. That's all it is. That's all it is. And the patterns your mind has formed are not based in a reality. They are not rooted in a reality. So if you want to start, for example, gender affirming care, either one-on-one -on -one therapy with a gender therapist or hormone care or something else, or maybe you want to start social transition, which is also part of gender affirming care, and you realize you are catastrophizing type and you realize you're now catastrophizing how things are going to unfold for you. I want you to really recognize that you tend to take your worry and magnify it by 20. And then I want you to bring down your worry and divide it by 10. And then take a step forward. For ruminating types, when you want to do something for yourself, again, maybe it is starting gender affirming care. Maybe it is to come out to your partner. Maybe it is to come out to your family. And you have dialed your rumination 
to trying to find the perfect way to do it, the perfect time to do it. Dial it way back to remind yourself that you're ruminating time and realize there is no right way and there is no right time. The right way is your way and the right time is now. It is very powerful once we start paying attention to our anxiety and how it affects our mindset. Because once you pay attention, you have control over changing the direction of your anxiety. And that's powerful. And for all of us anxious types, one way or another, what's underneath, what's the root that drives our anxiety for all of us? is lack of control, perception that we don't have control. So that's what I recommend. Start paying attention to what type of anxiety you tend to exhibit. Let me know in the comment section if you're listening to this podcast on YouTube. Let me know what type of anxiety you tend to exhibit, how it tends to manifest for you. And if you're listening on Apple, and if you're enjoying this podcast, go ahead and give it some thoughts. Go ahead and give it a good rating. I would really, really appreciate that. I really hope all of you are going to have a wonderful evening and not get too anxious after listening to this podcast. And if you are, take a deep breath. Remember, we all experience anxiety. I hope you self-soothe and ground yourself. I'm going to have dinner in a couple of minutes here. <laughs> and I'm going to ground myself by going on evening walk. And I look forward to speaking to all of you next time. Goodbye.